Okay, to create our Hello World program, um, I'm assuming at this point you have Eclipse running. If not, watch the tutorial on that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to first create a new project to put all my initial programs in, and I'll just call it Initial Programs, right? And I'm typing that right into the project name there. And everything else can stay as a default. So now as long as this Initial Programs is highlighted in here, I can create a new uh, class file. Now remember, every program in Java consists of at least one class file. So I'll name this class Hello World since I'm going to be writing a program that displays Hello World to the console. So one thing we should know is that um, whenever we create a program in Java, we need a minimum of one class file. Now, a good habit to get into when you create a class is to put a comment block above the class reminding yourself what this program did. So the way you do that to create a comment block is you put a, a forward slash star. And when I hit return now on my keyboard, Eclipse is going to fill that comment block in for me. So let's see what this means. This means that anything from this symbol, the slash star, to the star slash is going to be ignored by the Java compiler. It's only for humans to read. So it's a comment block. So the minimum you want to put in a comment block is who wrote this, right? And you would put your name there, right? And then the date to remind yourself how old it is, right? And I don't know, July uh, 12th. And the year too. Um, I'm hoping that these video tutorials for years and years to come will be useful. So I don't know, in 2025, a student is going to be watching my videos. Let's hope, right? And then the most important part is what's the purpose of this class file? And put something that's useful enough that you would actually remind yourself what this did because I guarantee you know three months from now three years from now you'll open this class file you won't remember what it's for so this is to test the compiler and display a message to the console right okay so now I have my comment block in there so inside of your class file you can have a minimum of one method or more than one method, right? hundreds of methods. So when you run a Java program, Java needs to know where to start running your program. Okay, And it doesn't just automatically go to the top of the file and start running down. It looks for a method, a special method called the main method. And the main method has to be declared like this, public static void main string args, right? And with an open bracket. Now when I hit enter, it's going to close that bracket, right? It is, these two brackets are open and closed. Now I'll give you a very brief explanation of what these words mean on this line, and over time you're going to understand them more fully. The public means that people outside of this class can call this method, right? Outside Hello World. Static for now means you're not writing object-oriented programs. Void means that the method called main does not return anything back to the caller. Again, you shouldn't understand these concepts yet. Main is just the name of the method, and for the main method, it has to be called main. All the future methods you write can be called whatever they want. And then what's in parentheses right here are, are things that get passed to the main method. In this case, an array called args. Our, our variable called args is going to get passed to main, and that variable is a um, string array. So again, you will understand all those concepts in the future. For now, um, just uh, understand that every program needs a main method, and it has to be declared like that. Now, the way we display to the console is we use a, a method called printLine. Right, and it's in system.out, right? So print line lets us type something, right? So I could write something here, right? And when I run this program, this whatever the string is, it's gonna get displayed to the console. Now, a couple things to 
remind yourself and point out before we do this. The tab up here shows the name of the class, right? It's hello world, and the file name is hello world.java. That little star in front of it in Eclipse means I've typed something in here, but I didn't save it yet, right? So if I came up and did file save, that asterisk goes away, right? Now, if I type in here, right, even if I just put a space, right, it's saying, hey, you changed it and didn't save it. Now, that's not terribly important at this point because when you compile your program, it's going to ask if you want to save it. And in the tutorial, we put the check mark there to say, always save it before you compile. So now I click this green arrow right here and it's going to compile and run the program, right? Now, when it compiles and runs the program, down here in the console is where I see my message get printed. Now, let's keep in mind that the programs you write at the for probably the first few months of your coding in Java are going to be writing and reading to the console, which is down here. You're not going to get into graphical user interfaces like Windows programs until you fully understand object-oriented coding, right? So until we get into object-oriented coding and then I teach you how to use Swing, all of the input and output is going to come down here into the console. So if I come up back up here to my code and I change this, right, to hello world, and I rerun it by clicking this green arrow, now down in the console, hello world appears. And we have successfully shown that Eclipse is working. We've successfully shown that we can write a program in Java and actually run it properly.